Personally, I, I wish that nobody ever found it. You know, I was pretty certain it was real. It's one of those things you, you're you looking at it and you know, you're appreciating it and you know that it probably shouldn't be here. On the other hand, you, you, you can't forget about it once you know it, that, it's, that it, it might be something extraordinarily unusual. Well, it was uh, a friend and a client, Rich Payton, had uh, contacted me and uh, he had been in the community school for whatever reason and happened to notice the painting on the wall and read it. And Rich is uh, a person that's well read and has a lot of knowledge in innumerable areas. And he called me and he says, gee, I saw this picture called the Afghans. Uh, I think it may have some value. Well, I'd seen it many years ago when I was younger. We were in here for the service and I looked across and I said, well, that's a lot better than I remember it. I said, well, let's take a closer look at that. You know, I was pretty certain it was real. I spoke to my wife about it and she was an administrator uh, in a school system that has an art, uh, a museum that has some, you know, rare pieces in it. Uh, she, I said, well, what do you think? I mean, I've, I've been involved in North Attleboro and, you know, this may or may not be received well. She says, well, if something happens to it, I'm the principal. I'm responsible. Kid throws a book at it, I'm responsible. The roof leaks on it, I'm responsible. We, you know, we need to know these things about the assets that we're charged with protecting. I spoke with Dave Mnugin, who was chairman of the school committee, and he does some work for me, he's a lawyer, and said, I, you, know, you have an important piece of art, perhaps, that you know, should be looked at. Right after that, I called Rick and I said, uh, gee, remember the Afghans painting? And he had some recollection of it. Uh, a client of mine told me that it may be worth some money. Why don't we look into it? This gentleman came to see me, and he had done his homework, had a lot of research completed, um, including um, evidence of the recent sale the year before for $1.8 million of another one of this artist's productions. And um, he counseled me regarding interactions with Sotheby's, which led me to take photos of the painting and to mail them to Sotheby's along with the completion of just a form that I got you know online. Uh, they said they'd be in touch in four weeks and certainly uh, they were at the beginning of January of 2007. On the morning I received the initial phone call from Sotheby's after they had reviewed the, the information that I had mailed into them about a month before, uh, the head of the Russian art department called me and she first said are you sitting down and um, I said yes and she explained that this painting um, done by this artist um, would be expected to bring between two and three million dollars. And she was confident um, that they would be able to make this happen. They helped, Sotheby's helped us contact a company, um, I think it was, they were from Middleborough, uh, Massachusetts, I think. I could be mistaken about that. And what they do is they transport uh, things of value. So it took a month uh, for this to uh, be put in place. And they showed up, I think it was Friday, February 4th, 2007. Um, and they took the painting out. They had a crew of about eight guys. We did have the police chief, Mike Gould, come. Um, and I can tell you that during that month, um, I knew that the thing might be worth $3 million and it's still hanging on the wall in our elementary school. And I thought about it every day uh, to the point where uh, nervous energy, I was over in that school more often than I typically would be, uh, just looking at it, making sure it was still there. And after the story broke, the principal told me that he was relieved because he thought he was in trouble. 
because I was in his building so often. He had left on a Thursday and we called other school committee members. I called members of the Board of Selectmen. Um, everybody was very happy. Well, I found out the Friday before the school committee meeting where the announcement was going to be made, I got a call from Superintendent Richard Smith. He indicated that um, we had a valuable piece of artwork that um, had been identified by a civilian and that they went in, they removed it, and they put it in a secure location at Sotheby's uh, d down in New York. My first reaction was, you know, we need to um, stabilize the situation and secure it. I was surprised, you know, that, that it was worth the kind of money that was, that was being thrown around at that point. I, w I was surprised and I, and I certainly understood, um, you know, how the value of the painting kind of changed things. You know, this is like a, you know, Antiques Roadshow. It was one of those things that was hiding out in plain, in plain sight. So my, I mean, my first reaction was, is that, you know, this is going to be great for, you know, for the arts of the school in North Atterbrook. Rick always reminds me of the story uh, when we <laughs> put the painting on the uh, cargo van to wave bye-bye to it. Uh, and I don't remember this, but there's one thing I wanted from the painting. It was a plaque in the bottom that said the Afghans, and it said gift to the town, the gift to the Attleboro schools of, and it had the names of the people that, that gave it. And instinctively I said, I want that, and I, that's the only thing I took from the painting, and we gave it to then town council Chip McGuire for safekeeping, and he said, what do you want that for? And I said, it's evidence of a gift. And this is before we knew what was gonna go on with this painting, and I said, I, I want that. You turned to me and said, you realize our problems are just starting with this. You can imagine our disbelief and how dismayed we were to read in the paper Saturday morning that the painting had been removed from the wall in the auditorium when my grandfather hung the painting over half a century ago. Further, this gift of art, because of its current value, had been discovered, had been sent to Sotheby's for auction. Let there be no mistake, we've always known that this was a fine work of art and of significant value. I was unaware of its current market value, but I am not surprised. How would you want to be Greg Smith? Pick up Sadie's paper, and there's a painting that your grandfather allowed, the t according to them, allowed the town to put in the auditorium for people to view. I was told that they couldn't find the, uh, the donor family on a Friday. I think it was taken off the wall on a Thursday. It was all, oh, they didn't know who the donor family was. At uh, quarter of seven that morning, Mr. Smith that owned Standard Chain was at my garage. It was his grandfather that donated the painting, which amazed me. Mr. Smith and I did meet um, Saturday um, after the newspaper article was in the paper. He took advantage of that opportunity to express um, his concerns with finding this information in the newspaper prior to being contacted. And then on Saturday morning, I got a call um, from one of the members of the Board of Select and telling me that he had a visit um, from Mr. Smith. And um, it was suggested that I might want to talk to Mr. Smith, which I did that Saturday morning at his home. We had different opinions regarding what should happen with the painting. And um, I told him that this was a unique opportunity to help children. And um, the message I received was that North Attleboro needs culture. Um, and that's pretty much where that ended. My family is of the opinion that this gift of art, a gift of culture, hung in a place of prominence for all the townspeople to enjoy, managed to escape harm right where it was for 55 years. It was in no immediate danger and with just a fraction more effort to find us, those who have taken it upon themselves to remove it could have discussed their thoughts regarding its value with the family that donated the painting. Virtually everyone on the Board of Selectmen I spoke to and everyone on town side of government when we announced the fact that we took this painting, we had it, and we shipped it off for safekeeping, they thought it was great, glad you didn't tell anybody, we can sell it, we get a lot of money for the school kids. It changed overnight. And the only thing I can think of that changed it overnight was Mr. S Ms. Rapoch to uh, then Selectman Rhino and now Selectman Rhino and everything changed. I would ask that we really go slow on this selling of the painting vote tonight. We have a family that donated it. 
that has been in this town for generations. Um, I think that I would recommend, if we all could, to work together with the family to come up with a, a remedy that we all can live with. John Rhino approached me as I was sitting down to take my seat to start the meeting and said, we have to slow down. We have some people that may not want to do this and we've got to slow down and discuss it. Everything's a rush to judgment. Let's slow down here. That family had done a lot to this community over the years. Mr. Thompson was a longtime resident, lifelong resident of North Attleboro. He and his wife both graduated from North Attleboro High School. Their three adult children all graduated from North Attleboro High School. Mr. Thompson was a principal of uh, the Vos Gallery in Boston, dealing in fine arts his whole career. The gallery was started by his grandfather, Seth uh, Vos, who was also a lifelong resident of North Attleboro. I never actually knew Mr. Thompson who gave the painting, um, but I knew Greg Smith and his wife and their family who lived on South Washington Street for many years, as many years as I can remember they were there, and always were um, quietly supportive and contributing to the community. In fact, I think if you go back, you will find that when the clock at the police station needed more money to be completed, he wrote the check. He doesn't like to be acknowledged about that, but there are certain things that you really have to acknowledge people for what they do. Greg Smith was a businessman in town um, and runs a business which still exists today, employed many people in this community was always um, a kind and respectful business owner who treated his people well. And no one had anything but good feelings about that family. You have a misperception regarding how well known it is in this community that the Thompson Smith family made that donation. And I know I've discussed that with you since I met with you Saturday. I want to tell you that it, it was not an easy thing to determine. As a matter of fact, we were not able to determine who the donors are. We never heard of the Smith family until, I never heard of it until Rick told me, long after we got, well, that we weekend to, after we got the painting out of town. There's no way we're going to enter into, into a negotiation with anyone regarding what we should be doing with this thing. Okay, we're told it's worth millions of dollars. Secure and insure. That was it. It would seem Mr. Mnugian, upon discovering that this painting may have increased in value recently, did only a very small amount of investigating into the history and the family who donated this painting. He was kind of shocked that it had just disappeared, especially when he found out that the plaque uh, identifying who the donors were, were taken off, was taken off the painting, and it was spirited out of town very quietly, and uh, the people that were on the plaque weren't consulted at all. They would think that since they were the donors, they'd be consulted about what was going to happen with the painting. And shipping it off to Sotheby's to be auctioned was certainly uh, <laughs> disrespectful to the family. We didn't discuss it with the Smith family because we didn't know the Smith family. But uh, we, they, weren't be, they were never going to be able to convince us that we shouldn't get the thing out of town. And regrettably, that took a month where only Mr. Mnugin and I and the the person that brought it to his attention knew the story. We took the vow of silence. It was taken off the wall, sent to Sotheby's. Nobody knew it. The school committee immediately just, you know, pulled it out of the building and, and sent it to, you know, to, to a safe haven, which, which is okay. But before anybody really had a, an opportunity, to, you know, to talk about it, the decision was made to take the painting down and to remove it from town down to Sotheby's in New York. And the entire school committee wasn't aware of it at the time. Just the superintendent of schools and the chairman of the school committee, who was uh, Dave Mnuchin. And I'm, I don't take issue with that. I understood their thought process and the reason behind doing it quickly. quickly. So I, I wasn't a school committee member that felt that I wasn't informed properly enough. I was certainly informed, uh, you know, after it was taken down and removed. You've suggested that we should not have taken the action that we've taken to secure and insure the property. And I'm going to suggest to you that 
um, we would have been irresponsible to not take those steps and I'm going to also follow up and say if anybody in this community knew that that painting was of that value it did not approach me to suggest that I take those steps then that person was irresponsible we did contact somehow can't remember exactly how a detective who recovers stolen art treasures around the world he just happens to be from Massachusetts and we talked to him at length multiple times about this whole story and I, the one, I, you know, I just remember a few things that he said to me um, that seemed to be of great importance. He said to me, you know Rick, there are people watching this story right now who are planning on how they're going to steal this if you bring it back to town. About the same time, uh, the pharmaceutical company in Mansfield got broken into by people dropping down into the ceiling and defeating the alarm systems. They stole about a million dollars in pharmaceuticals. A year later, another group dropped into the through the ceiling of a jewelry in Attleboro and stole millions of dollars of jewelry. Ultimately, they were, uh, they were arrested, but they defeated those sophisticated security systems. The mission here has always been about the kids. The important thing to remember about this painting is it's being secured, it's insured, it's safe, nothing's going to happen to it, uh, theft, fire, or damage, and we are not, if we do sell the painting, we will not be charging any storage fees. So. And, it's, and it states it in the, uh, in the letter that we did receive from Sotheby's. We did go out to bid with this, okay? Sotheby's and Christie's bid on it. Sotheby's won the bid because they offered to give us 105%, I think it was, yeah. of the sale value because they charged the buyer. We, they would hold on to it until the town could decide what they were going to do with it. And if, in fact, we did decide that we were going to sell it, then there would be no cost in incurred. So the reasons we acted, we haven't made a decision to sell it, we haven't signed a consignment contract to get it sold, we simply have it in a secure place where it will be insured and it will be safe from the environment, from theft, from vandalism. So I want to make that abundantly clear to you, sir. Yeah, I know. You seem pretty sure that you've done the right thing. I understand that. I, I'm confident I've done the right thing. Yeah. Well, I'm we, confident I've done the right thing. We, uh, we'll differ, but I'm confident I've done the right thing. As soon as we announced this picture, uh, was available to us and we told people that we had found it in our midst, we had taken it out of the community for s safekeeping and we announced to the school committee and members of the town side of government what we had. Everyone that I talked to on the school committee when I was chairman said that's great, it's a great opportunity for the town, we can have a trust fund. People's minds were rolling right away. Virtually everyone I talked to on the town side of government when we disclosed that to them had the same intent. But lo and behold, when we had a school committee meeting to discuss it and to formally vote on the sale of the picture, things changed. I think it's very important that when, we, when the town receives gifts that, that uh, we do as much due diligence as we can to find out what the original intent was. I think it, it makes a lot of sense that uh, when people uh, <coughs> give something to the town that they have, uh, some some sense that that their intent is going to be followed out. You can't sell something you don't own, you know, and you really um, have to be darn sure that you have ownership of something like that. The family felt his grandfather didn't donate the painting. They let the town view it. The town felt like it was donated. It was a gift from the five members of that family: Charles Thompson, his wife and his three adult children. They were, the, they were the donors of the gift. Charles used his money to buy it, but the family participated and were the donors for this, this gift. And that's what it says on the plaque. Amen. Gift of, and then it listed each of them with their dates of graduation from North Attleboro High School. This was something that they felt was really important for uh, the students that would be at, at the school seeing it. It was there to inspire uh, appreciation of fine arts. Was it a will to the town? Was it, uh, well, one do we thing, have any information at all in the circumstances? Well, one thing we, we have is the plaque that came off the picture. Right. And it simply, it's been in the paper. It simply says, Afghans by Alexander Ikalov, and it gives his date of birth, gift of, and then it states the family and presumably um, and the children's. Dates and the dates they graduated from high school, I believe oh, it was. Oh, is that what you think it yeah. is? If you check the school committee, meeting minutes from February 1951. Um, clearly there's no indication that Mr. Thompson ever intended for this painting to be given back. I believe he came the first time to tell the school committee he wanted to give it. 
to the school department and he came back after it had been hung, which by the way he did. The information that we had is pretty much the same information that we've, that we've got now. Um, very limited uh, minutes in the, uh, in the school committee minutes about it was, you know, it was presented to the school committee in the community school, which was then the high school, and then put up for, uh, for, en for the enjoyment and for, for students of North Attleboro to view. I think if there was a condition, we'd know about it. And I think that if someone wanted to assert a claim against this piece of property that's been with us and publicly mm -hmm. indicated as a gift, they'd have a hard time in any court. There's something called latches. But I understand. And I understand I, where I, you're I, coming I, from. Yeah, but I'm not talking about court. I'm not talking about anything. No, no, but I think it's important that, you know, I think it's reasonable for us to assume that it's our property. And, you know, the issue of the intent of the donors, it's you know, we can't go back and say what they thought they may want to use it for, but if it's a gift, I it's agree. a gift. I mean, I'm and then looking I, for real and the school, and it's up to, But it's up to the school committee to determine if their property is to be sold or not sold. I thought the school committee was going to vote to sell it that night. We were approached by John Rhino immediately before the meeting saying we've got to slow this process down. The Smith family has some concerns. So we let the Smith family address the school committee. I said, do you believe this was a gift or you do you contest the fact that it was a gift to the North Attleboro schools? They didn't get an answer. I posed the question again. Finally, after this back and forth, I got the answer that I thought I was going to get, that he did not believe it was a gift. At best, I believe the gentleman thought it was a, con a gift with a condition on it that says, if you don't keep hanging that in that school for perpetuity, we get it back. We, I guess, would be the heirs of the donors which was Mr. Smith, and if he has any siblings, those folks. Well, at that point, the attorney of me took over, and the battle lines are drawn. There's been a public cloud on the title, and when you have a cloud on the title, whether it's your house or it's your car, it has to be resolved in a certain way. And in this way, it's either going to have to be solved by way of mediation, um, arbitration, or having a judicial he hearing resolved. It was a public charitable trust. It wasn't I'm giving you something that you can use any way you want. It's unfortunately brings to the forefront a discussion of the constant sellout mentality that often prevails in this town. The school committee, seeing what they wanted to see, they thought it was a gold brick just hanging around in the school. And it was worth a lot of money and it sh should be cashed in and the money should be put to some of the uses that the school school department needed for it. And then they weren't thinking about the real substance of what this gift was all about and didn't contact the, the people. They would have found out that it was there to inspire uh, appreciation of fine arts. I can't believe you just picked up the plaque. <laughs> I can't believe you're holding it in your hand. The plaque for the painting was taken off the painting and it was sitting on the desk. And I could see, I, w I was with Mr. Smith, and I could see how hurt he was that they took that painting, the, pla the plaque off the painting. His mother's name was on it. His uncle's name was on it. Just created a lot of uh, sour taste. And from that time on, it kind of went downhill. I guess I'm gonna have to make the statement. This is, this is, this is a reflection of kind of a gold rush mentality in my family's opinion. And one can see from reading that article in the Chronicle that treasure was found. You couldn't get it out of the town fast enough. You couldn't get it into other hands fast enough. And, and quite frankly, using kind terms, it was poor form. This gift was never intended to be about money. And unfortunately, that's what's driving the situation ever since you got wind that it has potential value. As soon as we let people know that this thing had monetary value, there were a large number of art connoisseurs in town who just really wanted to appreciate this painting. And, you know, through the whole story, um, from my perspective, there's only one person who really understood art that was involved in this process, and that was Chris Frost, who's the current chairman of the school committee who was an art major in college. And what he explained to people is that what a painting depicts matters. What I do know about art is it seems that history is what makes art significant. And 
I don't think Alexander had this intention that it would be discussed in this way when he made this painting. Um, and I don't think your grandfather was a great grandfather, grandfather, had that would ever even imagine this. It's funny because, you know, having studied art, you, you know that there are things that people fight over. You know, one of it's land, the other is love, and then there's art. I think to best honor the intent of the gift at the time is to be able to cultivate more appreciation of art and why art is important to us. It's like having a Ferrari in your driveway not knowing how to drive, <laughs> you know? I mean, why, why is it a piece of art? Is it because it's big? Because it's got a frame? I mean, I bet most of the people in this room couldn't answer why it's a piece of art. Because it's a painting? So I think if we can honor, and I, and I don't know what his intent was when he gifted it, when he gave it, when he hung it up on the wall. And I don't think any of us really know 100% because we can't ask him. But I think if it was to better, the appreciation of art in North Attleboro, I think the best way to do that is to create a means, a vehicle, in which these kids can do that. Uh, one of the meetings that we all had was, I think it might have been one of the first school committee meetings we had, where we were discussing whether or not to sell it. I, I challenged everybody in the room to tell me why it was an important piece of art. And it was just blank stares. People, they could say, well, it's because it was painted by this guy. Okay, well, why is that guy important? Like, what did he contribute? What was significant about that? My name is Anna Weinstein. I'm the executive director of the Ballet Russe Arts Initiative, which is a nonprofit based in Boston that does arts projects connecting the U.S. with the post-Soviet region in the visual and performing arts. I'm also an art historian, um, finishing up my doctorate at Oxford University and uh, a recognized specialist in various areas of Russian art and theater history. I've consulted for Sotheby's and I have consulted for nonprofit organizations as well on various aspects of art history, provenance, and arts programming. The painting was created in 1932 and depicts Afghans uh, on horseback sitting down and is part of a group of uh, paintings that Yakovlev created in his studio in Paris after his return from his second expedition with Georges Marie Hart. Now that expedition was to was through Asia and what happened was that unfortunately Hart died in partway through that expedition and everybody had to return home uh, however they had already made their way through parts of Afghanistan uh, and uh, Kyrgyzia and elsewhere and so Yakovlev as in his first expedition had been doing a lot of uh, charcoal and sanguine studies uh, a little bit of tempera sketches, uh, tempera is a, sort of a paint-like uh, material, a little bit like watercolor, but more opaque. Um, and so Yakovlev, as before in 1924-25, did sketches on site, some paintings, and then he really used that material when he got back to Paris in his studio to create larger format, larger scale, important works depicting moments of life from some of these places that he had been. What characterizes the uh, the painting is it's, it's got sort of a, um, a slightly more vivid uh, chromatic palette than some of his other paintings uh, and makes it that makes it kind of very lively and that again is something that I think he was maybe consciously introducing in the studio as he was evolving and he's exploring sort of a, a looser stroke and, and an even more dynamic tech, painting technique. Mr. Thompson was friendly with Alexander Yakolov when he was associated with the Boston Museum of Fine Arts and when uh, Mr. Yakolov died, uh, Charles Thompson became the executor of his estate and helped his widow dispose of or sell his paintings at an advantage. This particular painting, the Afghans, was sold to the city of Fitchburg and I think the city bought it for $1,100 back in probably uh, the early 50s, late 40s and it was on display at their library. They bought it and had it on display. Mr. Thompson uh, went to Fitchburg and bought it for $4,000, thinking that it would be a really inspiring work for 
his beloved North Attleboro. And the place in North Attleboro where it could be displayed was the public meeting room in the high school, the auditorium. The auditorium was where any kind of a ceremonial thing took place. Things like honor society events took place there and, and things of that nature that were important. When I was a kid, they had barbershop, quartet, contest there. Ninety percent of your, act, your activities were there. I went to high school and for the four years that I was in high school um, that painting was there. As kids in school, I mean, you know, I can't tell you how many times we looked at that, that thing. It wouldn't be like putting it in the auditorium of the now high school, but that high school, the community school, when it was the high school, that was the center of North Attleboro. I mean, that was the hub. It was the largest school, it was the center of the community, it was uh, where everything took place. So beyond the students, there were many people from the community who also came into that auditorium. Part of the impact was the fact that it was so large, it was enormous, it covered a whole wall. And you know, when you first went to the high school, it, it really was impactful because it was larger than life. I think about all the boring meetings I spent in the auditorium of the high school. The town meetings, the planning board meetings, the uh, zoning board meetings, all these meetings where things were happening. I was in the audience waiting for my turn to participate. And I'm looking at this thing on the wall. It's huge. It's just a, a huge work of art. And you think, wow, somebody painted that. How would they even think about painting something that big? That painting hung in the what is now the Community Elementary School from 1951 to 2007, 56 years. And I can assure you that people stayed away from it by the thousands. And the reason is that it has no connection to this community. It doesn't depict something that would be of importance to the citizens of North Attleboro. The only reason people got interested in this painting is because they were told it's worth something. Nobody in the school uh, administration or any of the teachers or anything ever talked about that painting so that we could um, have some instruction about where that scene was, who painted it, um, how did we get it? Um, why was it hanging there? Uh, we never, I never knew anything about it. And so it became just part of the daily routine. And after a while, you didn't even notice it anymore. I remember comments like, I remember someone saying, um, a town official saying that, well, you know, if we bring the painting back and we put it in the police station, people's grandchildren can come and see it. Well, you know, a year before we knew anything about the painting, the principal of that elementary school, community elementary school, contacted me and asked me if he could take it down. My kids grew up under the shadow of 9-11 and they saw the painting and they made connections to what they were seeing on the news at the time. At that point in time, children were well aware of what Osama bin Laden looked like. And all of the 11 characters in that painting are dressed exactly the way he dressed. That painting depicts a bunch of Afghanis that were probably running either poppies and or heroin at the time through Afghan. Uh, there's armed guards there, etc. So it's got nothing to do with the culture of this country. If that painting had depicted a scene from Appomattox or something to do with the Civil War history or World War II or uh, the Revolutionary period, that would have been sitting in a prestigious place within the town of North Attleboro and no one would have had even an inkling to sell it. There's not a lot of um, historical significance to North Attleboro um, as, far as, as far as the community, other than a community member ha having come into ownership of it and then wanting to, you know, wanting to share it with everyone. So, so where is its value? Its value is in um, the culture of Russia. And an auction process was going to allow Russians to bid against each other, and that's where the money was going to come from. What drove the the Russian art market to its peak in 2007-2008 was partly the ups economic upswing that took place in Russia uh, if in the early 2000s, driven largely by energy prices. So it was a combination of the means to acquire art, 
uh, a resurgence of interest for Russian art that had been lost to Russia, if you will, for a while. And, and also some of these people it, were beginning to dip their feet into collecting. So they weren't sort of veteran collectors yet. And sometimes in their enthusiasm, uh, they would uh, fight very hard to acquire certain artworks. And they were not doing much collecting outside of Russian art. And let's say they weren't really buying Impressionist art very much at that period of time or old masters. And so, so you have collectors new to the market who are excited to buy art, who are uh, excited to buy art uh, by artists from their own country, especially that have not been seen in Russia, and you get some very spectacular sales, some very spectacular prices. The first battle that was going on was between the school committee and the board of selectmen. Who had the actual authority to sell the painting? There was a lot of discussion about authority to sell or not to sell. And that discussion started first and foremost with a discussion between the school committee and the board of selectmen. The school committee actually was divided at that point in time as to whether they did want to sell or not. Uh, but before they even got too far into the conversation, uh, I think uh, they wanted to make sure to confirm with us that they had the authority to sell it if they so chose. At that point in time, it was still the authority of the Board of Selectmen to sell any property that is part of the town. By the time we got done, you know, legal counsel had determined that, you know, only the Board of Selectmen can authorize the, uh, um, the disposal of any property that's owned by the town. We're set up in this town that uh, if the school committee wants to sell its property, the school committee has to vote to sell it then it's up to the selectmen to vote to sell it. For people to think that there was, uh, we didn't have the authority, we know we didn't have the authority, but even though they voted not to sell it, it's still within our control, our, us being the school committee. So at that time, I'm chairman of the school committee, we make overall policy decisions, the day-to-day -day control of the personal property of the school committee and the policies and the implementation of our policy rested with one person, and that was Rick at the time. So when Rick and I discussed it, I said, I would back, if he said we have to ship this out for safekeeping, I'm all for that. That's his call and that's the call he made. I had gotten a phone message from Steve Clapp telling me that he had faxed over a letter, so I made sure to grab that and bring it here so the committee would have the opportunity to see it. My letter to the uh, school committee outlines a way to do it without going to court. Talking about how it would happen in court, yeah, we did talk about that, but we said, the family doesn't want to do that. We want to resolve it some other way, and we proposed ways to resolve it. Uh, this suggests effectively that you give the painting away, you give it to a trust that uh, Mr. Clapp suggests that the gift be redocumented in the form of a written public charitable trust that effectively is actually undoing the gift in my view and the school committee would have to dispose of the property by giving it to the trust. I'm not at all sure how you would go about doing that, but the trust, as Mr. Clapp has suggested it, would then be uh, created by three trustees, uh, one appointed by the family, one appointed by the board of selectmen, one appointed by the school committee. Those three trustees would then have effectively complete authority to determine what to do with the painting now and in perpetuity. I'd like to clarify that the trust that's being proposed would give the trustees the authority to do anything that they felt was appropriate with the painting, including selling it, and that the purpose of the trust is to encourage the appreciation of fine arts among the students and people of North Attleboro. The Smiths offered to put up a lot of money. Put the, they were going to insure the painting, they were going to put it under glass, and they were, could put it at the police station. Uh, I do note that Mr. Clapp also notes that the family is volunteering to make an upfront donation of $50,000 to the trust to facilitate the trustee's immediate duties. I assume that is so that the trust would have the money necessary to try to uh, take immediate custody of the painting, so to speak, and provide for its immediate care. It would cost significantly more than that to create a safe haven for it. You can't just hang it in the police department. That had to be hermetically controlled. Uh, it's got to be encapsulated. There's a myriad number of things that 
to safeguard the school committee's property. We still weren't going to give up custody and control of that. And the family had had come forward to us with a with an opportunity to put. Um, I think it was. Um, trying to remember, I think it was like $50,000 or something close to that number, you know, to help pay for the security and everything uh, for the town, and which was great, but we still had no place to put it. There was some talk about putting it at town hall. You know, I came back in as a town administrator in August of 2007, and uh, one of the first things uh, within the next six months was the selectmen asked us to uh, research what it would cost to uh, relocate the painting from Sotheby's to Town Hall. Uh, we t contacted a lot of specialists. Um, we uh, talked with companies who do uh, restoration, uh, shipping of the painting, hanging of the painting, securing of it, preserving it. And obviously we talked to our insurance uh, people. We felt the initial cost uh, was gonna be uh, a little over, almost $19,000, a little over 18,000 to uh, bring it up here. And then the estimated cost, including the insurance uh, on it, which was $2,500 a year just for the insurance, but when we looked at, you know, keeping it upgraded and the conservator and uh, security equipment maintenance and so forth, that uh, we'd probably be talking around $5,100 a year to uh, secure and ensure the painting in Town Hall. The $50,000 is not blackmail. It's $50,000 that would allow the trustees a free hand in deciding what needs to be done without having to feel that there's only one choice. We don't have the money to insure it. We don't have the money to transport it. This gives the trustees the money to care for the picture, make the proper choice, and if it's sell it, sell it. But the money would be there for this ongoing purpose forever for the uh, encouragement of art appreciation in uh, North Attleboro. There was a discussion as to uh, the family and or other people putting money into a fund. And the question was how much would that fund have to be? We actually did a calculation that if the fund earned four and a half percent interest, which was which was happening at that point in time, uh, they would need to come up with about $132,000 to cover the first 19,000 and then have enough in trust so that the earnings from it would support the 5100 dollars a year and uh, maintenance. But again, the, even that money, although it certainly would have uh, probably allowed us to initiate and, and get the uh, uh, painting secure, at least initially, we would still end up with a cost over time uh, for as long as it was displayed in town. And they just failed on all fronts to produce any type of documentation to show in perpetuity they could safely store it, safely insure it, in the appropriate environment that can still ensure kids to see it and yet um, you know keep it within the school committee's province it just literally died on the vine and what rick and i collectively decided that during this period of uncertainty and turmoil or political turmoil we're not going to have this picture being brought back to town it's staying where it is if it's not appropriate to keep that painting today because the market is so good then the trustees should decide to do the right thing and that could be sell it and that's the that's the only purpose of this trust thank you why I have been so passionate in my posture regarding the sale of this picture and um, that question has been ringing in my ears uh, for the last couple of days and it was hard for me to answer but I think I'm prepared to answer it now my job can be boiled down to one sentence and that is to do what is in the best interest of the children in North Attleboro, present and future. That's really it. The thought that I have most often is that in any sort of a debate or, or problem, um, typically you can find moral high ground and uh, I've learned over the years that it's wise to try to occupy it. Because if you do, you have a real good chance of sleeping very well. And in this story, um, I'm certain that 
Mr. Mnugin and I and the majority of the school committee identified and occupied the moral high ground, which is the benefit to children. And if the others involved in the story at that time had joined us, those who had the authority to sell the painting had joined us, um, it's hard to minimize uh, what we would have achieved and the impact that this might have had on children for the past decade. If you vote yes, you vote to sell. If you vote no, there's no action. It would just stay in limbo That's the way it is. Way okay. yes. All those in uh, favor, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Two, that is uh, in favor, just for the record, Mr. Pickering, Mr. Kummer, uh, Mr. McKenna, uh, Mr. Frost, and myself uh, vote yes. Uh, those voting in opposition are Mr. Calcia and Mrs. Meelan. And for the record, there are uh, no votes in abstention. That motion carries. Now it's on the town side. If they didn't have the political courage to take it where it should have gone, school committees acted in their best interests. We acted in the best interests of the kids in North Attleboro. We voted to sell it. A public charitable trust is something that happens when a person makes a gift to a municipality or public body with strings attached. If the public body decides to accept that gift with those strings attached or with the understanding, it becomes a trust. And the public body has a fiduciary obligation as the trustee to carry out the wishes of the donor. I wrote to the Attorney General, I think it was at the request of the family, but I honestly can't remember if it was at the request of the family or the request of the um, school committee or the Board of Selectmen. But my question was, this gift that was presented to the town, is this something that we are allowed to sell? And um, I got a very lengthy letter back, uh, two pages, maybe three, that explained uh, what a public trust meant. And it was fairly clear in the letter that that was not something that could be sold. The essence of the Attorney General's letter, as I recall it, was that um, it was their opinion that it was not an outright gift that we could do with whatever we wanted to. That there were conditions to that gift. And the conditions from the Attorney General's perspective um, prohibited us from being able to sell it without getting the consent of the family. Sometime after that, I was asked to reach out again and ask for further clarification and to invite uh, the Attorney General, I believe it was the Assistant Attorney General, who came to town for a personal um, speaking to, I believe it was the Board of Selectmen at the time, to speak to them and explain the nuances of a public trust. They basically said, well, you can't sell it. That's okay, so so now what do we do with this whole thing? I thought that letter was way off base because first of all, they didn't have all the facts. You know, we can get an attorney to give any opinion, but it was arguing that it was a charitable gift and it was in the form of a constructive trust. That's a legal term of art, and that we held it as a constructive trust. The only person that can decide whether we hold it in a constructive trust is a gal or a guy with a robe on after right. an appropriate legal proceeding. The only way we could find out what can be done with this painting is to determine who owns it. Now, the only way to determine that is to actually go to court to find out who owns it. And I would imagine legal fees, and we've discussed this a little bit, um, could range anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000, or who knows, who knows long, how long this thing would run out. We could spend our money other, other places. After a certain fashion of time, um, you know, my attitude was to the selectmen, why don't you vote to sell it, and if we get sued, then we defend ourselves. It's a valuable asset for the town. We should do what's right. No one that I know of on the Board of Selectmen at the time had the political courage to say, we're going to make a decision to vote to sell it, and if they sue us, 
We'll see them at court. They were deathly afraid of having a lawsuit. You know, then there's no reason for us to, to relinquish any of our authority to any other board. I, I've, I've board. come to believe that strongly. And, and if that's the case, then, then we need to, to take what the, the recommendation of the um, uh, town council is and, and vote to sell it with, you know, with the um, uh, agreement with the school committee on disposition of funds. So the discussion started between, you know, us and the school committee and said, all right, fine, if, if you're going to sell it, then, then we need a trust that, that's going to take that money and put it aside and, and make sure that, that whatever money is gained from this thing, it goes to the arts, you know, for the, for the children of school in, of North Attleboro to support it. The school committee had had their discussions. The division that initially was there as to whether they wanted to sell it or not sell it had been resolved. And so at that point, it really was now this granting the authority for the school committee if they did want to sell it uh, to, to go ahead and do that. It had been an area of consternation between two town departments for a long period of time. And the selectmen felt that what they wanted to be able to do was say, hey, look, at what we're going to churn over or, or release any claim the Board of Selectmen felt that they had or control they had over the painting under the condition that the school committee would operate under a trust. The way those trust instruments came to be is um, I couldn't sleep at night once, and so I turned on the TV and the Board of Selectmen meeting was on. So I wanted to get to sleep. So there's nothing that'll put you to sleep better than a, watching either a school committee meeting or a meeting of the Board of Selectmen. But my ears per perked up. When I heard that meeting and their motion was, um, I'll agree to sell it if we have a trust instrument in front of me. Um, I got on the phone with Chris Frost on Friday. He was chairman of the school committee at that time. And I said, hey, did you hear about what the selectmen did? I watched the meeting, this is what they're doing. And he and I, over that weekend, put together three possible options on a trust instrument. We brought them to the school committee on, on Monday with their intent to forward them on to the, the um, uh, Board of Selectmen at their Thursday meeting. One thing of interest right now that's on everyone's mind is moving forward. And part of the commitment that the Board of Selectmen had made was that um, they were moving forward if they could see us moving forward. And this is hopefully a, um, a gesture of that motion. Um, as you'll see in front of you, you've got A, B, and C uh, trust agreements. We wanted a way, a vehicle, for people in town to enrich their arts knowledge. Um, had the painting been sold, the, the, the funds were to become a trust for the town of North Attleboro, named after Charles Thompson. So it was a Charles, uh, Charles Thompson charitable art, art trust or it was something along those lines and um, and it was divided into three pieces uh, one of it was uh, funding for grants for uh, enriching school programs one was for community programs and I believe one was for scholarships so right there it was going to be doing a lot more good than having a an important piece of art hanging in the police station or city hall to be displayed as as it was a gift um, with no explanation of why it was important or significant. The, the first one, the B, was the 303010 that was the subject of a December motion um, by Mark Williamson at, at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. At least that, that's what I took out of it. So that's kind of, and there was reference at the meeting that that was the substance of what, of what they did. So that has to do with, with B. 30% um, goes, uh, goes to the arts, 30% goes to uh, a community program. Um, yeah, it was, it was student, Adderall, student arts, community yeah, arts. Accru an accrued interest to fund Williams Scholarship, art, the Arts Scholarship, 30% to the Arts Enrichment Program, 30% to the, um, well, they're, they're listed there. And the, they don't touch 10%. It goes back into the principal. Would the committee be able to consider uh, moving forward with uh, seeking a, a meeting of the subgroup or? Well, that still uh, exists. You want to call yeah. a meeting of the subgroup? Yeah, I can, your I, can, I can call that and get Tony's availability and, and your availability. Yes, myself. Yes. So there were quite a few uh, subcommittee meetings 
uh, between representatives of the school committee, uh, the superintendent of the school, and uh, myself and representatives of the Board of Selectmen uh, to iron out the trust. something that you could consider or be involved with that might be able to fashion an instrument that might allow for the sale of the of the painting and carry out your family's wishes to some degree not all not the whole degree but to some degree like you said we don't have to we, we're, no we don't, you don't we have, have to a, i'm putting you on the spot but i'm going to rhetorically <laughs> it's a rhetorical question here's, here's but that's a question i think that, that has to be yeah, asked approaching that makes us assume that the painting cannot be feasibly displayed in North Attleboro. Without conceding that, it. makes that us not, assume with, that, without, but we can't Without assume conceding that, that point. Because I mean, we, all, otherwise we don't know. We don't know what the option is. Assume, all, let's we, assume it can't be, for argument's sake. Say, let's, let's put it, let's me, let me frame it a different way. Say you lose in court, okay, and the judge asks for input from the family as to how do you think your ancestors and your present relatives would be able to feel that they could, well, how would they we give the think opinion? That, why don't we think Mr. Why Thompson give, would have been disgusted. Why don't we, and why don't we give I, I pr He probably would. He would have been disgusted. He that, would have and said, and we'll I placed a lot of faith in North Attleboro, and I shouldn't have. Okay. The Cypre doctrine is what the court would apply if they went to court to do something other than display the painting, they'd have to get permission from the court. And the Attorney General pointed out exactly what would be involved in that and said the pitfalls are that you can't show that you can't carry out the purpose of the trust to display the painting. It is possible to do it. You can't prove that you don't have the funds to do it because the family's willing to put up the funds. So you really have no way to prove your case. So why bring a case that you can't prove? Why waste the money on it? If a judge says that it's the, if the town owns it, that's going to be the model for the selectmen. Right. If the town says it's a, it's a gift, it's a gift, right. but the school owns it, right. it's a model for the schools. Right. Right. Yes. This got. And developed. if it's a charitable trust, it's a model for that too. Right. This instrument got developed as a result of my viewing the board of selectmen meeting, where they said, "I want to see a trust document in front of me before I approve okay. the sale." So, just so, yeah. so we understand that. Right. No, and I think we've I think we've I think we've come a heck of a long way now. <laughs> so, okay, but I mean I, I agree with it. I you know and John agrees with it. Um, you know I have no problem taking that to the board. And the the, the final determination, you know, Roger's right. It's going to depend on what the judge says. If it's a trust, whether it's a you know. Um, a no, but this is going to be a model, no matter which way model, it comes. Whichever comes way it comes out, it goes. the two boards that that we all need to agree a, that this is this is what's going to happen, right? Regardless, right. regardless of the outcome of the, of the judgment, right. unless it goes back to the family, right. unless it goes back to the family. Well, that's okay too. We'll do that too. Right. The intent was to clear the title, right? If everybody's on board, anybody has an interest, you get to clear the title and do something with it. The trust instruments had uh, a team of people, including the family, who would be involved in uh, promoting the arts if that's what they wanted to do. But it wasn't carved in stone. That's why we gave them three, so that the options were open for everybody to do whatever they wanted to do. So that's how the trust instruments came into being. Up to 75% can be spent is the way this is written. Of the interest. Yeah. Of the interest. So uh, the 25% would be retained, retained no matter what. I will try to get a new draft over to you as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, I can guarantee you won't be until sometime next week. But I'll get it over to you so you can go through it. Yeah, you know, we hammered out you know this trust agreement and everything with the with the um, the school committee, and um, and we agreed. And we allowed the school committee to go forth and do it. And are you going to present this to your full board as soon as as soon as it's drafted? We handed the trust and the, I'm going to use the word custodial parent to the school committee and they were going to take it to court and see what they could do. Nothing happened. It didn't seem to be a genuine interest. It seemed to be uh, a way to get through that day, that, that meeting, perhaps to address it in a very token fashion. It didn't seem genuine um, by the time we got 
We got through that ad hoc committee. We produced all those three trust instruments. Their attorney looked at it, you know, rough drafts as given as they were, um, but it didn't seem as if there was really, it was almost like a, a fake effort uh, to try to try to resolve that. When I get it, I'll circulate it. You uh, any changes, or if there are minor changes, then we can Chip and I will work it out. I That's think. Right. I don't think we need another meeting for it. No, I don't it's think so. Either. And we'll do the same on this end. For the for the paper, we've been approached by. Um, um, Several parties, uh, Elizabeth uh, Poirier, Betty Poirier, as you may know her. Um, we've also been uh, approached by the family uh, with a uh, proposal to uh, bring said painting back into town um, to be displayed in the interim while the decision is being made as to um, who is permanent home, whether it to be sold, whether it to be hung, whether it to be done, whatever. Um, now, this was also reinforced by um, the, the chief of police saying that he is not in opposition to this being held in his, um, held in his, uh, in his police station. I was contacted by Greg Smith, and he explained to me that he had had meetings with Chief Riley, who was fairly new at the time, and Chief Gould, who was the former chief, that he would like to be able to resurrect the painting from the basement of Sotheby's and put it in the entrance lobby into the police station. Uh, anyone who's been to the police station, there's a set of stairs you go up and then open a transparent door to actually get into the station. This area that he was speaking about was alongside the stairs, so it wasn't actually in the police station. It would be in the entrance hallway. There's a big wall um, as you're going in on the right, and that's where he proposed to hang it with um, all the proper lighting and security, uh, which he said that he would pay for. He would pay for the removal, the transfer, the mounting, any kind of repairs that needed to be done, as well as the security and the proper lighting for the painting so that it could be hung in town in a safe place where people would be able to come and appreciate it. Through her efforts, the police department, the chiefs, retiring chief and new chief decided that the lobby of the police to police station would be a great place for it. Now, this isn't the ordinary police station that you think about. This is a police station in another treasure of North Attleboro. The H.F. Barrows ma jewelry manufacturing building has been rehabbed and repurposed for the use of the police department, but it has public meeting rooms in it, two, a small conference room and a large conference room with a beautiful lobby. Using that conference room, you get the appreciation for the industrial nature of jewelry manufacturing. That's part of the building, and having it in the lobby is a wonderful venue, and the police department was very happy to do that, and they wrote a letter in support of that through Betty Poirier's efforts. The family agreed to put $50,000 to the purpose of getting the painting in a great restored position and protected in the police department. And they had a fine arts person consult deciding what needed to be done to make that painting safe in the venue of the police department. And they talked about how it should be cleaned, how it should be protected with a shield that would keep the ultraviolet light off it, uh, protect it from the elements if the sprinkler system went off or something like that. It would be well protected there. It would be set back behind a, a barrier, which was already there, which would be, you know, very uh, a good spot for it. And um, so through all this, the, the Smith family Decide, said, yeah, we'll put, put up the money. It's going to be $50,000 to do that, and it'll be more than enough money to bring it back and, and mount it and put it there. That's what they wanted to do. I don't believe the police station is an art museum. Uh, that's my opinion. 
Uh, it's a place of business to conduct business um, and uh, taking care of legal matters. Um, that's just my opinion. For one thing, I remember people criticizing the idea of hanging it in the police station. They thought that that was certainly not an appropriate place for it. It would be a great teaching tool, bringing a fifth grade class to the police station to see that painting and to hear about the history of how it was created, who Alexander Yakolov was, and who Mr. Thompson was, and who Mr. Vos was, and what happened with the controversy, and how it ended up locked away, not in Guantanamo, but the Afghans were in Sotheby's and how it comes back to North Attleboro. This would be a wonderful uh, aspect to the history of the painting. Who is going to pay to find out who owns it? Is that something that at this point, as a school committee, we want to pursue? Say, yeah, you know what, we're ready to spend the money to bring it to a judge to find out what that is. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if this board is ready to do that. We need to answer the question that was in the letter written to the superintendent. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is there's a question that needs to be answered. They ask and they bring it back. The family volunteered to provide transportation, but we need to know long term what would the insurance, who would be covering the maintenance and the insurance of the painting, and are they? On that, I'm not going to answer. Yeah, the exactly. The it gets it. Yeah, I exactly. I think the insurance piece is a huge piece. I think there's a letter that's probably four or five years old, six or seven years old, in the superintendent's office that the former chair um, Mnuchin wrote about questions that needed to be answered before the painting yeah, come and back it was, to town. So those questions still haven't been answered. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it, this, is a, this is a, again, this is a long work in progress, but um, the fact that we're all talking about this openly now, about what the actual, not opinions, not feelings, not, not emotions, this is, this is what it comes down to right now. And, and, um, um, and I know, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think any one of us here want to give up uh, any member of the staff just so that we can find out who owns the thing. Ultimately, uh, Greg Smith's um, proposal to bring it back and hang it and take care of all the residual things was declined. I wanted to bring it to light. I wanted to bring it out in the open so that, you know, the people were aware that, that it wasn't just sitting, waiting. You know, we've actually, you know, we've, this is, in some respects, for some people, this is a very good thing. It's a very good, very promising thing. So um, I think it's important for everyone to know that, 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 that the gesture's been made and that the interest is there. Um, but then again, you know, we have a responsibility not just to the public at large, but to, to our district to make sure that, you know, it's, we're doing the responsible thing too. The previous administra uh, administration, the, uh, the, the superintendent, uh, she had challenge, financial challenges and there were things that she was facing that were, um, they were drawing a lot of her time and attention. Um, she, they had to close, close the school, uh, they had to redistrict all the students. It was um, you know, very, very tight financial constraints. I'm not interested in taking $10,000, $12,000 or $50,000 to litigate this thing, um, but ultimately there has to be a clearing of the title to the property and as I mentioned from the outset that either it has to be in a judicial forum by agreed upon arbitration or mediation where you can give all of the information uh, to a neutral third party in order to make a fair decision um, as far as what happened back in the back in the 19 uh, the, the 1950s but I'm not willing to stand on town meeting floor and say hey give us this money so that we can litigate this thing um, certainly if the family wants to commence that which I really thought would happen by now, you know, this issue would have been aired and it would have been resolved a long, long time ago. Um, but they don't seem interested in that. Um, I don't know what their motivations are. Um, so from where I sit every day, um, I'll be going to a PTO meeting tonight where they're raising money for the kids. Um, I'm not going to advocate um, any money uh, to litigate this matter, unless of course it's something that we have to defend that, that puts you in a, in, in a different posture. But right now everything's preserved, it'll stay where it is, and, and if somebody wants to commence some litigation, you know, we'll have to address that uh, at, at that time. It's, uh, it's been a while since I heard about the Afghans painting. There's so many emotions that go with it. Disappointment. Um, it's been 10 years. Uh, and we've still made no progress in terms of determining uh, the fate of that painting. 
And it's just unfortunate that the way that things happened. And I still remain very strong in that opinion to this day, that I think the painting should be returned to the family. You know, a lot of people doing the right thing. They want to do the, they want to do the right thing. And a lot of people getting a lot of information from a lot of different sources. Um, and, you know, just good people trying to do the right thing. What are we going to be facing now? What kind of a challenge are we going to be facing? And what are what, are what people are looking to see come out of this? I would really like to see it come to a resolution. And the best resolution is everybody feels they didn't get the best deal. There's countless children in this town that may never go outside of North Attleboro, may never see it go into Boston. What a nice thing it would be to have um, you know, a fund set up so that we could do field trips to um, enhance all the arts, whether it's English, uh, the, uh, language arts, um, drawing, uh, uh, arts such as what this picture represented. It's just innumerable. Now recently I was contacted by a member of the school committee asking if if the school committee decided to give it back to the family would the family accept responsibility for it and I, I checked that out and told him yes or I had him talk to Greg Smith and Greg Smith said yes we would we would accept it back if the town can't see clear to carry out its responsibility to display this painting as it can be displayed. I just do not want this to get bogged down. I want a decision made. I want to, whether it's an agreement with people or total agreement, I want a decision made so it moves forward. We're not going to be in a stage of paralysis on this.